This series begins with a young boy named Kim Soo Hyun. He was undergoing training under the guidance of a man named Pavel. Pavel's aim was to transform Soo Hyun into a heartless and merciless child, just like himself, as he was a skilled assassin. However, when Pavel ordered Soo Hyun to kill a dog, he couldn't bring himself to do it. As a result, Soo Hyun had to face the consequences of his disobedience. Interestingly, the dog that he spared ended up saving his life. Fast forward 16 years, and Soo Hyun had grown up to become a professional assassin himself. Meanwhile, Pavel, now old and frail, suffered from an illness that weakened his abilities as a contract killer. One day, Pavel gave Soo Hyun a photograph that revealed details about Soo Hyun's past. However, he seemed indifferent to this revelation because he considered Pavel to be his only family. It was then that Pavel decided to share his own backstory with Soo Hyun. Pavel disclosed that he was once assigned by Soo Hyun's father to eliminate him. However, instead of carrying out the task, Pavel made the compassionate choice to raise Soo Hyun as his own. Upon hearing this shocking revelation, he attempted to brush it off and distract Pavel by showing him pictures of an island they could visit together on vacation. However, Soo Hyun believed that dwelling on the past was unimportant. In response, Pavel remained silent, burdened by guilt for treating Soo Hyun with such coldness throughout the years. Then, as Soo Hyun slept, he was plagued by dreams of his past, but as soon as he awakened, a sense of urgency took hold of him. He rushed to Pavel's room, only to find it empty, leading him to believe that Pavel might have headed to the Mafia headquarters to carry out his final mission of assassinating the Mafia leader. At that time, Soo Hyun was aware of Pavel's deteriorating health condition, which would undoubtedly hinder his ability to fulfill the task, so he wasted no time and set off in pursuit of Pavel. Meanwhile, armed with his shotgun, Pavel stealthily tracked the movements of the Mafia leader. However, his illness prevented him from taking the shot. Determined to complete his last assignment, Pavel devised a plan to confront the Mafia leader directly within the confines of the headquarters. Unfortunately, Karimov, the son of the Mafia head, swiftly detected Pavel's presence, foiling his attempt. Karimov apprehended Pavel and dragged him into a room, subjecting him to merciless torture while relentlessly demanding to know who had hired him. Despite the agony, Pavel steadfastly refused to reveal the identity of his employer. In a surprising turn of events, Su Hyun arrived at the Mafia headquarters, managing to incapacitate the Mafia leader and commanding him to assemble his men. This strategic move allowed Su Hyun to easily rescue Pavel. As word spread, the Mafia leader's men hastened to the room only to discover their leader lifeless. Shortly after Su Hyun successfully saved Pavel, a colossal explosion shook the entire base, intensifying Karimov's wrath and fueling his unwavering determination to exact revenge upon Su Hyun. Following their escape to a safe hideout, Su Hyun made desperate attempts to tend to Pavel's grave wounds. Regrettably, Pavel's injuries were so severe that he implored Su Hyun to cease his futile efforts and expressed remorse for teaching him the ways of a killer. Just before his demise, he offered Su Hyun a final piece of advice which was to seek happiness and live as an ordinary person. A few days later, at a certain location, Su Hyun's broker, Philip An, received an unexpected visitor who was a woman who presented a tempting job offer to Su Hyun, promising substantial rewards. Aware of Su Hyun's grief over Pavel's loss, Philip doubted that Su Hyun would accept the assignment. However, the determined woman reassured Philip, insisting that Su Hyun would indeed agree to the job. She handed Philip a photograph and then departed. Perplexed, Philip sent the photo to Su Hyun, who was taken aback by its striking resemblance to the picture Pavel had given him. After successfully escaping with his loyal canine companion, Su Hyun approached Philip, seeking further information about the woman's mission. Philip revealed that in order to receive another photo pertaining to Su Hyun's past, he would have to eliminate several designated targets. Intrigued by the prospect of unraveling his own mysterious history, Su Hyun's curiosity got the better of him, and he agreed to undertake the request. Two years later, a man found himself perched on a cliff, engrossed in his hunting expedition. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Su Hyun launched a surprise attack on him, leading to the man's untimely demise. Soon after, Do Hyun Jin, a female police detective with the esteemed rank of inspector, took charge of investigating this perplexing case of the man's death. Relying on her intuition and sharp instincts, Hyun Jin began to suspect that the man had fallen victim to a meticulously planned murder executed by a skilled professional. On her way back home, fate threw an unexpected encounter in Hyun Jin's path. She stumbled upon Su Hyun, who was earnestly attempting to tend to an injured deer. Witnessing his struggle, Hyun Jin extended her helping hand and assisted him in administering anesthesia to the wounded animal. Going above and beyond, she even used her scarf to carefully bandage the deer's wounds. However, her selfless act appeared unappreciated by Su Hyun, much to her annoyance. She expressed her frustration, emphasizing that he should express gratitude for her assistance. In response, Su Hyun seemed indifferent and casually handed her a business card, suggesting she could take his scarf if she desired. 
Now, Su Hyun runs a veterinary clinic and resides in a building he rents from a young woman named Kong Sulgi. Sulgi is an orphan girl with a considerable inheritance, which includes several multi-story buildings owned by Su Hyun. Tragically, she received this inheritance after her grandfather's life was cut short due to a murder. Despite his constant disregard and apparent lack of concern for Sulgi, she persistently seeks ways to establish a closer connection with him. On the other hand, Hyun Jin persists in her investigation of the man's death on the cliff as she believes it is linked to a series of murders committed by the same killer. Her conviction stems from stumbling upon a notebook authored by one of the victims. However, her fellow police officers dismiss her claims since each victim she mentions seems to have different suspects, and there are no apparent connections among them. Moreover, the police have already apprehended a suspect believed to have murdered the aforementioned man. Despite facing skepticism and lacking concrete evidence to support her suspicions, Hyun Jin remains steadfast in her beliefs, trusting the findings of her investigation thus far. Not long after, the police managed to arrest the suspect accused of killing the man on the cliff, and strangely enough, it turned out to be a drug addict who owned a restaurant frequently visited by Su Hyun. This discovery added an unexpected twist to the unfolding events. Meanwhile, Su Hyun, after completing his murderous assignment, obtained a photograph depicting a house connected to his past. Driven by curiosity, he decided to venture towards the house, even though his memory failed to provide any recollection. To his astonishment, upon entering the house, an explosion occurred, demolishing it completely. Fortunately, Su Hyun miraculously survived the blast, prompting him to realize that the person who had ordered him to carry out these murders was an exceedingly dangerous individual. Some time had passed, and once again, Su Hyun found himself assigned with a new target for assassination. When he laid eyes on the photograph, he recognized the face of his next victim and it was Hyun Jin. As he prepared to carry out his deadly task, fate intervened in an unexpected way. Just as Su Hyun readied himself, Hyun Jin arrived at his doorstep, cradling an injured cat. It turned out that she had accidentally collided with him earlier, causing harm to the feline companion. Without hesitation, Su Hyun sprang into action, tending to the wounded creature. In that moment, a flicker of curiosity sparked within Hyun Jin, as she wondered why he was targeting her and what secrets from his past he had captured in the four photographs he possessed. The following day, Hyun Jin was seen venturing into Sulgi's building, searching for a new place to call home. However, Sulgi, noticing Hyun Jin's growing interest in Su Hyun, adopted a cold and distant demeanor, hoping to dissuade her from choosing that particular residence. Despite Sulgi's best efforts, her ploy failed as Hyun Jin became even more determined to secure the location for her own strategic reasons. The next day, Sulgi returned home from school, only to find herself on the verge of being kidnapped by her uncle and other relatives who coveted her inheritance. Fortunately, Su Hyun and Hyun Jin arrived just in time, swiftly dispatching the would-be kidnappers and rescuing her from their clutches. <laughs> Meanwhile, Do Jae-won, Hyun Jin's adoptive father, took an interest in the victims of Su Hyun's murders, cases that his daughter had worked on. In the evening, Hyun Jin crossed paths with Su Hyun once more, attempting to be friendly despite his cold demeanor. She kept finding reasons to meet him, citing her cat that was still receiving treatment at Su Hyun's clinic. There, they engaged in conversation, discussing Hyun Jin's motives for helping a recent acquaintance named Sulgi. As a police officer, Hyun Jin claimed it was her responsibility. Curiosity got the better of her, and she inquired about the relationship between Su Hyun and Sulgi. She had discovered that Sulgi, an orphan with a substantial inheritance, was being targeted by her relatives, who sought to claim the wealth for themselves. Regrettably, before Su Hyun could respond, Sulgi overheard their conversation, growing angry at Hyun Jin for interfering in her affairs. Then, Hyun Jin attempted to chase after Sulgi, wanting to explain everything, but the infuriated girl sharply rebuffed her. Just then, Su Hyun arrived and informed Hyun Jin that her actions had wronged Sulgi. He believed that everyone harbored secrets they didn't want others to meddle with. At that time, Hyun Jin felt trapped, despite her genuine intentions to aid Sulgi. The next day, Sulgi felt really sorry because she had been mean to Hyun Jin. Su Hyun saw that she was feeling guilty and suggested that she should say sorry to Hyun Jin. Meanwhile, Hyun Jin was dealing with a tough job. She had to solve a case involving a bad street gang and the Russian mafia who were doing bad things like taking people away. The police needed evidence to catch them, and Hyun Jin had to find it. While Hyun Jin was in a serious meeting, her phone suddenly rang. It was her adoptive mom, Jung Soo Yeon. This made Hyun Jin really scared because her mom always wanted her to be a ballet dancer, but she decided to be a police officer instead. 
Even though she had a rich family, Hyun Jin wasn't happy because her parents always put pressure on her to be what they wanted. After seeing her mom, Hyun Jin went to Soo Hyun's clinic to see the cat she brought earlier. She liked being with the cat because it made her feel better. She asked Soo Hyun to come with her to the shooting practice because she wanted to forget about all the bad things that happened that day. However, Soo Hyun felt bad for asking about Sul Gi's problems earlier, so he agreed to go with her. While they practiced, he acted like he wasn't good at shooting, just for fun. After they finished, Hyun Jin thanked him for being there, and Soo Hyun didn't know what to say, so he stayed quiet. Then, when Soo Hyun returned to his special clinic, something super unexpected happened. Out of the blue, he received a mysterious message from Philip. The weird thing was, Philip never ever texted him before. At that time, Soo Hyun's curiosity got the best of him, and he couldn't help but ask Philip about it. What he found out was mind-blowing. Philip explained that Sneaky Karimov might have hacked his phone to track down Soo Hyun. That made Soo Hyun furious. Then, he demanded to know where Karimov was hiding. Meanwhile, Karimov found himself in the heart of a dangerous gang's secret headquarters. This gang was being spied on by Hyun Jin. Sadly, her cover was blown. The gangsters quickly caught her. Thankfully, Soo Hyun secretly swooped in to save the day before the other police officers arrived. However, Hyun Jin, determined as ever, chased after Karimov with her gun raised, demanding his surrender. But suddenly, he tried to shoot her first. Just when things looked grim, Soo Hyun swooped in like a superhero and saved Hyun Jin. But Sly Karimov used this chance to escape. Meanwhile, as Soo Hyun was about to make his exit, Hyun Jin aimed her gun at him. Yikes, but clever Soo Hyun managed to slip away easily. He had to catch Karimov, who was on the verge of getting away in a speedy car. Soon after, Soo Hyun dashed into the car with lightning speed, ready to put an end to Karimov's mischief. Suddenly, a fierce battle broke out between them as they struggled for control. It was intense, but then, Karimov did something really, really bad. He tried to ram the car into a group of innocent little children. Seeing that, Soo Hyun had to act fast to save those precious kids. He swerved the car at the very last second, avoiding the little ones but crashing into a nearby stall. And sadly, Karimov escaped from him once again. At the police station, Hyun Jin asked her colleague to check the surveillance footage about the incident where Soo Hyun protected her. She didn't know his identity yet, but she discovered that he acted all by himself. This made her even more curious about him. Meanwhile, Karimov's subordinates found out about Philip's headquarters and kidnapped him, hoping to track down Soo Hyun. In the evening, Hyun Jin went back to Soo Hyun's place with a special birthday cake. It was her childhood friend's birthday, and she wanted to celebrate with Soo Hyun. Surprisingly, Soo Hyun was okay with it and agreed to join her in enjoying the delicious cake. During their time together, Hyun Jin asked Soo Hyun if he had a childhood friend like her. He mentioned having a friend who always made paper boats for him. That night, he seemed to forget about his mission to harm Hyun Jin. He felt that she was genuinely a good person. On another day, people spotted Hyun Jin and Soo Hyun together, visiting the daughter of the food stall owner they often frequented. The poor girl had almost become a victim of human trafficking. As they headed back home, Soo Hyun noticed a wound on Hyun Jin's face. He suggested that she take care of it so it wouldn't leave any marks. Hearing that, she smiled, surprised that someone as cold as Soo Hyun would notice such a small thing. Meanwhile, Jaewon who was with his friend Ji Young Hoon, who worked at a hospital. They both knew that some bad things were happening because of something that happened in Jaewon's past with a man named Hyun Woo. Jaewon suddenly realized that his own company was putting innocent children in danger. Hyun Woo had decided to leave the company, but Jaewon's greed made him do something really bad. He ended up hurting Hyun Woo and his family, and even killed them, because he wanted to hide the bad things they were doing. But something strange happened. Hyun Woo actually survived the attack. Jaewon thought that Hyun Woo wanted revenge, so he believed that Hyun Woo was the one doing all the bad things. The people who were killed were witnesses who knew about Hyun Woo's family being hurt, which made Jaewon even more scared. If Jaewon's guess was right, that meant Hyun Woo was really dangerous. At the same time, So Yeon went to a clinic to find Soo Hyun and asked for his help. She even said she would give him a lot of money, but he didn't want any money. He promised to help her without taking any money from her. At the same time, Karimov managed to find Soo Hyun after hurting Philip. And suddenly, Hyun Jin came home and saw that things in her house were different. She realized that her mom, So Yeon, had done something. There, she got curious and asked her mom about it. Her mom told her that she had met Soo Hyun. Hearing that, Hyun Jin got really worried because she knew her mom could do some bad things. Then, she hurried to meet Soo Hyun because she was afraid her mom had done something really bad. Then, as they reached the clinic, Soo Hyun signaled Hyun Jin to take a seat. With gentle hands, he skillfully tended to her injured arm. Little did he know, outside the clinic, Karimov was lurking in the shadows, watching Soo Hyun closely. The next day, Hyun Jin and Soo Gi, who had patched up their differences, walked side by side, their laughter filling the air. Suddenly, her gaze fell upon a tiny scar on Soo Gi's forehead. 
it reminded her of her dear friend's daughter, the only one who could shed light on the mysterious death of their senior. At that time, curiosity sparked within Hyeon Jin, and she couldn't resist asking Sul Gi about it. But Sul Gi, avoiding the question, hurriedly left without uttering a word. Meanwhile, Su Hyeon's mind raced with worry. He sensed that Karima might be targeting Hyeon Jin, so he made a secret decision to shadow her, ensuring her safety from a distance. However, fate had a different plan in store for him. To his surprise, Karimov's true target turned out to be Sulgi. Panic gripped his heart as he rushed to Sulgi's school, desperate to shield her from harm. Back at home, Su Hyun, his anxiety mounting, handed a whistle to Sulgi. He instructed her to blow it if she ever found herself in danger. Days passed, and she innocently played with the whistle, unknowingly summoning Su Hyun's protective presence multiple times, even though there was no immediate danger. But one fateful day, Karimov finally struck, attacking Sul Gi with relentless force, and Su Hyun's worst fears became a chilling reality. Then, with all her might, Sul Gi tried her best to blow the special whistle Su Hyun had given her. But even though she couldn't make a sound, he magically appeared, as if he knew she needed help. There, he shielded Sulgi from the danger and swore to protect her by getting rid of Karimov. When Suhyeon saw Sulgi trembling with fear, memories of her past trauma flooding back, he made a brave decision. He chose to let Karimov escape and rush Sulgi to the hospital, ensuring she got the care she needed. But Suhyeon wasn't about to let Karimov slip away completely. He had secretly hidden a sneaky tracking device on Karimov's clothes so he could keep tabs on him. After making sure Sulgi was safe and sound, Suhyeon dashed towards the Mafia headquarters, where Karimov was hiding. With his heart racing and determination in his eyes, he confronted Karimov, pointing his trusty gun right at him. At that time, Karimov begged and pleaded, promising that if Su Hyun spared him, he would spill all the secrets he knew about Su Hyun's mysterious past. Just when things seemed to be at their breaking point, Karimov's henchmen swooped in, eager to attack Su Hyun. But our brave hero effortlessly defeated them, showing off his incredible skills. Once again, Su Hyun aimed his gun at Karimov, his finger ready to pull the trigger. In a final act of justice, he ended Karimov's wicked ways once and for all. On the other hand, Sulgi was lost in memories of a dark past, haunted by the death of her beloved grandfather. The one responsible for his demise was none other than Pavel. Back then, Pavel grew restless after eliminating Sulgi's grandfather, fearing that a witness might expose his true identity. So, he decided to return and silence the witness, a journalist named Mr. Investigator, who was digging into the mysterious disappearance of Hyun Woo. Little did Pavel know, Sulgi was present at the scene too. It turned out Pavel had wicked plans to end Sulgi's life as well, but luckily, Su Hyun stepped in, believing that she was just a little kid and incapable of unmasking Pavel. In an act of bravery, Su Hyun thwarted Pavel's wicked intentions. From that moment on, Sulgi looked up to him as her older brother, unaware of his true identity. The following day, as Hyun Jin stood by Su Hyun's side, her phone rang. It was her police partner with distressing news. Karimov, a notorious mafia member, had been discovered dead on the pier. Filled with shock, Hyun Jin rushed to the crime scene, where she was greeted by a gruesome sight. Karimov had fallen victim to a professional assassin, leaving her perplexed about the identity of the murderer. Shortly after, Hyun Jin tried to reach Sul Gi on the phone. But just as Sul Gi answered, Su Hyun appeared out of the blue, causing Sul Gi to quickly end the call. They chatted about her wish to erase the scar on her forehead, hoping to forget the painful memories it held. Little did they know, Hyun Jin's call hadn't been disconnected, and she overheard their conversation, piquing her curiosity about Sul Gi's past. Feeling that Sul Gi might hold crucial information about the journalist's death, Hyun Jin decided to contact a police informant named Dong Young to dig deeper into Sul Gi's family history. Meanwhile, at his clinic, Su Hyun received a surprise visitor and it was Philip. It turns out Philip had been kidnapped and tortured by Karimov's gang members. Seeking refuge, he asked Su Hyun if he could stay at his place, and Su Hyun kindly agreed. Intrigued, he introduced Philip to Sul Gi, who was just as surprised as he was by the unexpected guest. Elsewhere, Jae Won, filled with rage after discovering Hyun Woo was still alive, unleashed his fury upon his subordinates. He even went so far as to threaten them, urging his secretary, Yoon Ji Hae, to handle Hyun Woo's affairs and bring calm to the situation. In the bustling police station, Hyun Jin was on a mission to uncover the masked man's identity, the one who had come to her aid. However, her superiors interrupted her with news of a new prosecutor assigned to their area. At first, Hyun Jin didn't see the point of meeting this prosecutor, feeling it had nothing to do with her. But after constant nagging from her superiors, she reluctantly agreed. When she entered the new prosecutor's room, she felt a strange vibe. He was too busy playing games, annoying her to no end. Frustrated, she quickly retreated to her own office. The next day, Su Hyun crossed paths with Hyun Jin again. As he spent more time with her, he realized what a genuinely kind-hearted woman she was, always ready to lend a helping hand. This only fueled his curiosity about her. To make her happy, he even brought cat toys for Hyun Jin's furry friend. 
The thought of Su Hyun lingered in her mind even when she was at home. Meanwhile, Su Hyun couldn't stop thinking about Hyun Jin either. Their thoughts were intertwined. Just then, Philip arrived, delivering a photo of his next target. It was a politician named Lee Sang Yeon, who was running for an upcoming election. There, Su Hyun started to notice a pattern that the targets always seemed connected to his past. Determined to gather information, Su Hyun went undercover to dig into Sang Yeon's life. He discovered that Sang Yeon was an acquaintance of Jae Won. Using Sang Yeon's daughter's search for a veterinarian as a clever ruse, Su Hyun managed to infiltrate Sang Yeon's house. With stealth and skill, he entered Sang Yeon's room, planting a bug and retrieving vital documents from a hidden safe. Meanwhile, in the hustle and bustle of the police station, Hyun Jin was determined to uncover the truth behind Karimov's mysterious demise. With a heart full of curiosity, she sought out the wise forensic doctor who held the secrets hidden within Karimov's lifeless body. As Hyun Jin gazed upon Karimov's wounds and gunshot marks, her eyes widened in both fear and wonder. They were just like the injuries that had led to the demise of the previous victims in the chilling serial killings she had been investigating. Her detective senses tingled, and she realized that the masked man, who had unexpectedly become her unlikely helper, was the culprit behind these dreadful crimes. But that's not all. Recently, fate had brought Hyun Jin face to face with Yoon Jong Woo, a new prosecutor she had planned to meet before. Curiosity gnawed at her, urging her to discover the masked man's identity. Jong Woo, knowing her desire for answers, invited her to share a meal. However, she hesitated at first, but he revealed that he held crucial information about the very person she had been seeking. Reluctantly, she accepted his invitation, feeling compelled to uncover the truth. Unfortunately, their dinner took an unexpected turn. Jung Woo, burdened by his worries, sought comfort in the arms of alcohol. It was up to Hyun Jin to ensure his safe journey back home. As they arrived at Jung Woo's house, a tender moment hung in the air. He reached out his hand, ready to say goodbye, but an unforeseen twist awaited them. Su Hyun, an observer with feelings hidden deep within, cast a jealous glance upon Jung Woo's attempt to approach Hyun Jin. The flames of envy danced in Su Hyun's eyes, leaving behind a shadow of doubt that clouded their once warm bond. The events of that fateful night continued to reverberate within the walls of Su Hyun's home. Consumed by jealousy, he turned cold and distant towards Philip, his faithful friend who had prepared a delicious meal. The next day, something super important happened. Hyun Jin got some top secret papers from Jong Woo. These papers had information about all the people who were hurt by a super mean serial killer. And it turned out all those victims had something to do with this big fire that Hyun Woo saw a long time ago. It's like a puzzle, and all the pieces fit together. But here's the really interesting part. All those people who got hurt were somehow connected to an orphanage. And it turned out Hyun Jin actually grew up in an orphanage. That's right, she knows all about it. Meanwhile, Su Hyun is still thinking about Hyun Jin a lot. He's kinda curious about her. Soon after, he met Philip, who was looking for some files that belonged to Sang Yeon. And it turned out Sang Yeon used to work at the same orphanage. So, when Su Hyun heard this news, he couldn't wait to go to the orphanage and find out if there was something there that could help him understand his own past. But it turned out Hyun Jin had the same idea. She went to the orphanage too, and it brought back a lot of bad memories for her. As soon as Su Hyun entered the orphanage, memories started flooding back to him. He remembered a time when he was a kid and had a girlfriend there. She was really nice and always helped him out by giving him letters in the shape of paper airplanes. He loved getting those letters. But now, since the orphanage was all empty and abandoned, he didn't find any real clues except for the memories that came rushing back. Then, Su Hyun saw someone else in the building. He got all sneaky and hid to see who it was. And it was Hyun Jin. She was hiding something behind a brick. It was letters, just like the ones Su Hyun used to get from his friend back in the day. At that moment, Su Hyun got really curious, so he decided to follow Hyun Jin. But he had to be super careful not to get caught. And just when he thought he was about to be seen, he quickly ran away and hid from Hyun Jin in his own car. Then, when Hyun Jin arrived home, she saw the same motorbike she had seen before. It made her curious, so she asked Sulgi about the owner. And it turned out the bike belonged to Su Hyun. At that moment, Hyun Jin started thinking that maybe Su Hyun was also from an orphanage like her. She really wanted to find out, so she asked Sulgi to invite Su Hyun over for dinner. Eating together would give her a chance to investigate. And finally, Hyun Jin's suspicions were answered when Su Hyun showed a lot of interest in the paper airplane she made. It had the same writing as before. At that moment, Su Hyun realized that Hyun Jin was actually his childhood friend from the orphanage. It was like a big surprise for both of them. When Su Hyun told Philip about this, Philip warned him to leave right away. He thought maybe Hyun Jin was trying to trick him and expose his true identity as an assassin. But Su Hyun didn't listen to Philip. 
He just wanted to find out who tried to kill him when he was little. That was really important to him. So, he decided to gather more information from Song Yeon, the guy who used to work at the orphanage. At the same time, Soo Hyun was eavesdropping on a conversation between Song Yeon and his guy, Park Tae they were talking about a secret that Song Yeon was hiding from all the kids at the orphanage. There, Soo Hyun got shocked when he saw Song Yeon scolding Tae Su because he didn't take good care of the important documents in his safe. Luckily, the documents were still there, and Song Yeon said they were the reason why he was still alive. Soo Hyun heard all this from his house, and he realized that there was someone else who was even more powerful and really scared of Song Yeon. Soon after, Jaewon met with Tae Su, who actually works for him. He told Tae Su that he let Song Yeon live because Song Yeon has important documents that hold secrets about the orphanage. Meanwhile, at the clinic, Hyeon Jin approached Soo Hyun. She finally realized that he is her childhood friend. But they couldn't talk about it for long because Soo Hyun had to go meet Philip for some important stuff. But she told Soo Hyun that she would wait for him at a restaurant. Shortly after, Soo Hyun decided to go see Tae Soo for some information about the orphanage. But when he confronted Tae Soo, something really bad happened. Soo Hyun suddenly remembered all the awful memories of Tae Soo, who used to work at the orphanage and always bullet him. Suddenly, they got into a big fight, and in the end, he had to run away because one of Tae Soo's friends showed up. After returning to headquarters, Soo Hyun couldn't stop thinking about his past memories. But it turned out Philip managed to find information about a former caretaker from the orphanage. This caretaker could help Soo Hyun find important information about his future. With the information that Philip found, Soo Hyun hurried to the caretaker's house. He was so determined to get answers that he even ignored Hyun Jin, who was waiting for him at the restaurant. When Soo Hyun reached the caretaker's house, she got scared when she saw him. But he explained that he was a boy who had survived and just wanted to talk. She didn't believe him at first, so he tried to convince her by helping to fix things around her house. Later, Soo Hyun finally met Hyun Jin again. She was still waiting at the restaurant, and he caught up with her just in time before she left. They started chatting while walking home together. Then, he couldn't help but ask her about their memories from the orphanage. And she told him that it was the scariest time of her life. She mentioned that they used to exchange letters on paper airplanes. Then, when Soo Hyun arrived home, his mind was filled with thoughts about what Hyun Jin had said. It was something that had changed her life, and it got him thinking too. Meanwhile, Philip told Soo Hyun that their client wanted him to do a job again. They wanted him to execute Song Yeon. However, that made Soo Hyun realize that he couldn't go back to a life of crime if he wanted to be with Hyun Jin and live a normal life. Just then, Soo Hyun received a call from his former nanny. She couldn't speak, so she used gestures to communicate. Without even thinking twice, he rushed to his nanny's house. She had something important to tell him about the orphanage where he was named number 88. But it turned out Tae Soo had already arrived to execute the woman who used to take care of the orphans. At that moment, Soo Hyun was a little late, and all he found was her dropped cell phone. It was so frustrating because he couldn't get any information from her. The next day, Hyun Jin finally found out some information about Sul Gi, the girl who witnessed something important. She was searching for Sul Gi for a long time, and now she immediately met her to ask everything. But at that time Sul Gi looked scared and didn't want to talk about the incident, even though Hyun Jin kept begging. It was really frustrating. But then, Su Hyun arrived and asked Hyun Jin not to pressure Sul Gi. He told her to give Sul Gi some time. Hyun Jin was sad because she had patiently waited for nine whole years for everything to be revealed. Waiting can be so hard sometimes. Feeling heartbroken that she couldn't reveal the truth about the death of her lover, who was a journalist, Hyun Jin went to visit his grave. Little did she know, Soo Hyun secretly followed her. After Hyun Jin left, Soo Hyun also visited the grave. When he saw the man's photo, he realized something shocking. Her lover was actually a victim of Pavel. Meanwhile, Philip received another message from their client. The client was wondering why Soo Hyun hadn't executed Song Yeon yet. They even threatened to do something to Soo Hyun and Philip if the job wasn't done soon. Moreover, Philip's client, Ji Hae, seemed to be on Hyun Woo's side. Hyun Woo was disguising himself as a gardener and living close to Soo Hyun. The next day, feeling guilty about their fight, Hyun Jin took Soo Gi for a walk with Soo Hyun's pet dog. They spent time together and made up. Sulgi was curious why Hyun Jin wanted to know about her ex-boyfriend's death. So, Hyun Jin explained that he was someone very important to her. When she felt scared and pressured by her adoptive mother, her boyfriend's presence gave her the courage to become a police officer. He meant a lot to her. Meanwhile, Soo Hyun was getting ready to execute his target, Song Yeon. He entered Song Yeon's room with a gun, but his plan failed when Song Yeon's young daughter entered the room. There, Soo Hyun had to leave without completing his mission. On the other hand, Ji Hae, the one who gave Soo Hyun the assignment, got really angry. She told her assistant to teach Soo Hyun a lesson for not following their agreement. Soon after, Philip kept pushing Soo Hyun to finish the assignment because he didn't want anything bad to happen to them. 
but at that time Su Hyun had no desire to be an assassin anymore. He asked Philip to cancel all the deals with their client. However, Philip was scared of Ji Hae's threats, so he asked for some time to try and convince Su Hyun to do his job. While they were talking, Ji Hae sent a photo to Philip, hoping to persuade Su Hyun. But after seeing the photo, Su Hyun asked Philip to track down Ji Hae. He wanted to confront her directly if she really planned to carry out her threats. Shortly after, Su Hyun received a photo from Philip, and it led him to a funeral. The grave was the real Hyun Jin, the girl with the same name as his friend. She had passed away from her illness. At that time, Su Hyun started remembering the moments when he met the girl who gave him the name Su Hyun. They even took a photo together with her mother, Su Hyun. It was a bittersweet memory, and it turned out the reason Hyun Jin was adopted was because she looked a lot like the girl that Su Hyun really liked. It was like they wanted Hyun Jin to fill that missing piece in their lives. Su Hyun felt like his client knew a lot about his past and all the secrets from the orphanage. He realized that if they could find the identity of the client, all the information about his future would be revealed. He wouldn't have to listen to the client's orders anymore. Soon after, Su Hyun immediately ordered Philip to track down and find out who their client really was. They needed to uncover the truth. And at the same time, Philip didn't waste any time. He started searching for the identity of their client too. One sunny day, Hyunji found herself alongside her fellow policemen, secretly spying on Song Yeon. They had a sneaky suspicion that someone was plotting against him. Her heart raced with excitement as she observed the campaign from afar. Just when things seemed normal, Hyun Jin's phone rang. It was the police sketch expert, who had finished drawing a picture of a mysterious masked man. Eager to solve the puzzle, she hurriedly made her way to meet the expert and see the sketch. Little did she know that this drawing held a secret she couldn't yet fathom. At first glance, the sketches appeared ordinary to Hyun Jin. But everything changed when she met Jong Woo. In that moment, it struck her like lightning that she realized that one of the sketches resembled Su Hyun. Determined to find the truth, she dashed towards Su Hyun's clinic, hoping to uncover evidence. As Hyun Jin arrived at the clinic, her heart pounded like a drum. She searched every nook and cranny, hoping to find a clue that would lead her to the masked man. Unfortunately, luck was not on her side. Just as she was about to stumble upon something crucial, Su Hyun abruptly entered the room. Thinking on her feet, she quickly pretended to be searching for medicine for her pet cat. However, Su Hyun eyed her suspiciously, but before he could say anything, Hyun Jin mustered up the courage to ask him about his adoptive parents. She longed to discover the truth hidden within his past. Yet, all he revealed was that his adoptive parents had passed away. With those cryptic words, he left the room, leaving Hyun Jin with a sense of unease. Undeterred by Su Hyun's evasiveness, Hyun Jin decided to venture further into his room, hoping to find evidence that would prove her suspicions. But her bold move backfired as Su Hyun caught her in the act. He realized that Hyun Jin was searching for something important in his house. Deep down, Hyun Jin knew that Su Hyun was the masked man she had been searching for. Without wasting a moment, she contacted Dong Young, urging him to uncover every piece of information about Su Hyun. Time was of the essence, and she couldn't afford to let the truth elude her grasp. Meanwhile, as Su Hyun walked alone, his mind lost in thoughts, his phone suddenly rang. It was Hyun Woo, who threatened to harm those people who Su Hyun loved. The reason for this danger was simple. It was because Su Hyun had refused to obey Hyun Woo's orders. However, at that time, Su Hyun didn't care much about anything because he was on a mission to uncover his past. He thought everyone around him was useless. But one day, something changed. He saw Hyun Woo targeting someone very special. It was Hyun Jin. Knowing that, his heart raced with worry and he knew he had to save her. Even though Su Hyun knew that his actions could put his loved ones in danger, he couldn't bear to see harm come to Hyun Jin. So, he decided to go against the warnings of his friend Philip. He planned to carry out his mission right in front of everyone, despite the risks it posed to himself. Soon after, Su Hyun climbed to a rooftop near where Song Yeon was campaigning. He had his rifle ready, and doubts filled his mind. But when he thought about the danger looming over his dear ones, he made up his mind. In a moment of desperation, he aimed and shot Song Yeon, causing chaos to erupt at the campaign site. Meanwhile, Hyun Jin was already there, and her keen eyes scanned the scene. She knew the person who had shot Song Yeon was still around. That's when she spotted Su Hyun wearing a mask. Determined to catch him, she swiftly gave chase. Their pursuit led them to a deserted place, far from prying eyes. Hyun Jin, with her gun in hand, confronted Su Hyun and demanded his surrender. In a daring move, she tried to remove his mask to reveal his identity. But before she could, Su Hyun swiftly handcuffed her to a nearby fence. It was a cunning escape plan, and he left her behind, struggling to free herself. Meanwhile, J1 seemed really mad. He had a feeling that his own people were responsible for killing Song Yeon right in front of everyone. To cover up his involvement, he ordered his subordinates to quickly get rid of any evidence. Back in her office, Hyun Jin felt frustrated. She couldn't catch the masked man, and it bothered her. But then, she remembered something important. Su Yeon had said something strange before he left to go to an animal hospital. 
She thought maybe Su Hyun was the masked man all along. Determined to find the truth, she rushed to the animal hospital to investigate. As Hyun Jin arrived, her suspicions about Su Hyun were not confirmed. He was already there, and even the hospital manager said Su Hyun had been there for the past two hours. She couldn't suspect him anymore, even though she had a feeling he just arrived and asked the manager to lie to her. The next day, because San Yeon was murdered in the middle of a crowd, the prosecutor's office created a special team made up of both police officers and prosecutors. Hyun Jin and Jung Woo were part of this team. Soon after, she shared her suspicions about San Yeon's death being connected to the serial murders she had been investigating. They knew they had to gather all sorts of evidence to uncover the main suspect and solve the case. Elsewhere, Jae Won and Yong Hoon were talking nervously about the murder of Song Yeon. At that time, Yong Hoon was scared and pleaded with Jae Won to take action before something bad happened to them. Just then, Jae Won's men arrived with some news. They suspected that Ji Hae might be working with Hyun Woo. But Jae Won hesitated to believe it. It turned out Ji Hae had been his secretary for a whopping 19 years, after all. Meanwhile, Ji Hae was seen waiting anxiously for Philip. But when she spotted him being confronted by loan sharks, she hurriedly left. It turned out Philip had a habit of borrowing money from them to fuel his gambling addiction. Just as the loan sharks were about to harm him, Su Yeon appeared out of nowhere and came to his rescue. When they reached home, Su Hyun sensed that Philip was hiding something important. He insisted that Philip track down the person who kept ordering him to commit murders. Reluctantly, Philip agreed to help. Suddenly, their mysterious client sent them a photo of Hyun Jin. Seeing that, Su Hyun's heart raced with panic. On the other side, Hyun Jin was in the autopsy room with Jong Woo, where they discovered that someone had secretly poisoned Song Yeon's eye drops. At that time, Hyun Jin and Jong Woo realized that there was something more to it than just an ordinary serial killer. While questioning witnesses about Song Yeon's death, then, Hyun Jin came across Tae Su, who used to work for Jae Won. Suddenly, his presence triggered a traumatic memory for Hyun Jin. She remembered how he used to torment children at the orphanage, bringing back her painful past. Overwhelmed with fear, she left the room after receiving a call from So Yeon. Outside the office, So Yeon noticed Hyun Jin's pale face and worried expression. Concerned for her safety, So Yeon suggested that Hyun Jin quit the police force and join her company, offering her a high position. But Hyun Jin, with determination in her eyes, refused. Being a police officer was her lifelong dream. However, little did they know, Su Hyun was watching them from his car. He had a history with So Yeon and decided to secretly follow her after she said goodbye to her daughter. As they arrived at So Yeon's house, Su Hyun donned his mask and entered quietly. He discovered that Jae Won was watching a video of a boy undergoing a painful operation. Soon after, Su Hyun quickly recorded the evidence. Just as he did, Jae Won unexpectedly entered the room with a former chief prosecutor. On the other hand, Su Hyun hid, eavesdropping on their conversation. He overheard Jae Won admitting to hiding many children in an orphanage. This revelation triggered memories of a dark incident from Su Hyun's past. It was when he was still in the orphanage and a boy had revealed the horrifying acts committed by Jae Won and his group. Unfortunately, a terrible turn of events occurred. Su Hyun tried to escape, but Jae Won caught up with him and struck him, causing Su Hyun to fall unconscious. With a cruel plan in mind, Jae Won stuffed him into a bag and commanded Pavel to dispose of it by tossing it into the vast, deep sea. In the present, after remembering his past, Su Hyun left Jae Won's house. He felt a mix of emotions swirling inside him as he made his way to the clinic. At the clinic, he bumped into Hyun Jin, who had just returned from a fun night out with her co-workers. They found a cozy spot in the park and sat down together. Su Hyun, feeling a strong connection with Hyun Jin, mustered up the courage to ask about her life after being adopted. With a hint of sadness in her eyes, Hyun Jin revealed a secret she had carried for a long time. She confessed that she often put on a brave face in front of her adoptive parents because she was afraid of being sent back to the orphanage. Deep down, she yearned for happiness and tried to stay strong, believing that her childhood friend would want her to be happy too. Meeting Su Hyun again, all grown up and leading a good life, brought her immense joy. As Hyun Jin poured her heart out, Su Hyun felt a wave of guilt wash over him. He had lied to her about something important, and now the truth weighed heavily on his shoulders. The next day dawned, and Su Hyun was still grappling with the mysteries surrounding the evidence he had seen at Jae Won's place. Determined to uncover the truth, he decided to send the video to Ji Hae, hoping she could shed some light on the matter. There, Ji Hae wasted no time and immediately contacted Philip after watching the footage. Coincidentally, Su Hyun was holding Philip's phone when he received Ji Hae's call. He answered with a trembling voice, pretending to be Philip, and threatened her, demanding to know everything she knew about the video and Jae Won's motives for collecting children from the orphanage. His menacing words hung in the air, leaving Ji Hae stunned and fearful of what might come next. 
The next day, in his little clinic, Su Hyun was minding his own business when Sulgi approached him. She had made up her mind to talk to Hyun Jin, another friend, about a past incident she witnessed. At that time, Sulgi asked Su Hyun if it was okay for her to confess everything to Hyun Jin. Su Hyun, who had heard about the incident, thought for a moment and told her to follow her heart, even though it might hurt someone later. Not much time passed before Sulgi and Hyun Jin sat down together for a meal. Sulgi, full of determination, told Hyun Jin that she wanted to be honest, but Hyun Jin kindly asked her to wait until she felt ready to share all the details. Hyun Jin understood Sulgi's intention and didn't mind waiting because she realized that Sulgi wanted to protect Su Hyun. After their lunch, Hyun Jin and Jong Woo went to Song Yeon's house, searching for clues. They discovered that Song Yeon was furious with Tae Su when he found out someone was trying to steal documents about the children in the orphanage from his safe. Hyun Jin and Jong Woo believed that all the murders that had occurred were connected to the orphanage. Just as they were pondering the situation, Hyun Jin received a call from her colleague, who shared that Tae Su had thrown something away on the day of Song Yeon's murder. Without wasting a moment, Hyun Jin and Jong Woo rushed off to the dump, hoping to find what Tae Su had discarded. It didn't take them long to locate the item, which turned out to be a perfect match for the poison found in Song Yeon's eyes. With the new evidence in hand, Hyun Jin dug deeper into the case. She suspected Tae Su of being involved in Song Yeon's alleged murder. During the interrogation, Tae Su pleaded for a chance to talk to Jae Won. He believed that if given the opportunity, he could reveal how all the murders were connected to Hyun Jin's adoptive father. Though Hyun Jin had no concrete proof against Jae Won, she decided to meet him face to face and confront him about Hyun Woo's sudden disappearance. However, Jae Won remained tight-lipped, refusing to provide any information. Meanwhile, Jae Won hurried to the hospital to check on Yong Hoon, wanting to ensure the safety of Ji Hae, the older sister of one of his subordinates who had died at the orphanage. While contemplating ordering Tae Su to protect Ji Hae, Jae Won was startled by a video message sent by Su Hyun, who had secretly infiltrated the hospital. The video showed a boy undergoing surgery, and it caught Jae Won completely off guard. As for Hyun Jin, she faced obstacles in arresting Tae Su as the prime suspect in Song Yeon's murder due to the lack of evidence obtained by the police. Determined to find more proof, she and her colleagues searched tirelessly. Unexpectedly, a package arrived containing old newspaper articles about a body found near the orphanage. Strangely, these articles hadn't received much attention. Intrigued, Hyun Jin sought out the journalist who had written the reports. The journalist revealed that anything related to the orphanage seemed to be covered up by the government. Shockingly, she had even lost her job for exposing the truth in her articles. At that moment, Hyun Jin was determined to find the location where the body was discovered, marked by a ribbon by the journalist. But when she asked for a search warrant, the top police and prosecutors denied her request. Undeterred, Hyun Jin decided to take matters into her own hands. She gathered her colleagues and together they dug up the body of the orphanage caretaker, even without a warrant. This led them to uncover the truth about the caretaker's murder committed by Tae Su. In another encounter, Su Hyun met Ji Hae at a restaurant to discuss the mysterious video he had received. However, Ji Hae asked him to leave immediately because she had an appointment with Jae Won at that very place. Before parting ways, Ji Hae urged Su Hyun to find out the location where the video was filmed. She also handed him a photo of Yong Hoon, revealing that he would be Su Hyun's next target. Soon after, Su Hyun left while Ji Hae prepared to meet Jae Won. Little did she know, Jae Won had already discovered her betrayal. He instructed Tae Su to take Ji Hae somewhere safe, ensuring she remained alive because Jae Won had plans to use her as bait to lure Hyun Woo out. While in his car, Jaewon received an unexpected call from an unknown number. It was Su Hyun, who had discovered the shocking truth that Jaewon was his biological father. At that time, Su Hyun demanded answers, questioning why Jaewon had treated him so cruelly and even attempted to kill him in the past. In a calm and collected manner, Jaewon explained that Su Hyun was a valuable pawn, and his existence only hindered Jaewon's grand plans. Hearing this, Su Hyun's anger surged, and he directed his rage towards his car, which was right in front of Jaewon's vehicle. Realizing the imminent danger, he was frightened as Su Hyun attempted to ram his car. But at the last moment, Su Hyun swerved away, leaving Jaewon shocked and shaken, but ultimately unharmed. Meanwhile, after discovering the caretaker's body, Hyun Jin goes to the nanny's house. She finds a note with Su Hyun's name and phone number on it. Meanwhile, Su Hyun learns that Philip has been secretly communicating with their client, receiving secret payments. There, Su Hyun also discovers that Philip was the one who gave Karimov information about his whereabouts, making him furious. Soon after, Su Hyun confronts Philip and kicks him out. Later on, Hyun Jin meets Su Hyun and shows him a paper she found at the orphanage. She suspected that he might be the killer, but Su Hyun reluctantly confesses that he did meet the caretaker to learn about his past. He convinces Hyun Jin that he is not the one who killed the nanny. After hearing his reasons, she believes Su Hyun because she also finds out that the woman's body she discovered was a former caretaker at the orphanage. 
Back at the office, Hyun Jin shares all her findings with Jung Woo. They realize they need to find Song Yeon's documents or locate Hyun Woo, who used to be in charge of the orphanage. Then, Hyun Jin asks Jung Woo to meet J1 so they can gather information about Hyun Woo. At the same time, J1 gathers with Yong Hoon and Tae Soo to discuss their colleague's killer. After examining all the evidence, they come to the conclusion that Soo Hyun, one of the orphanage children who was supposed to be dead, is the murderer. They suspect that Hyun Woo, the person who ordered the hit, may be involved as well. On another note, Soo Hyun can't help but wonder how his client always seems to know who is close to him. He also has a feeling that Ji Hae doesn't act alone. Suddenly, he notices a flower pot given by Sul Gi, which he bought from a florist. Soo Hyun decides to go to that place and unexpectedly comes face to face with Hyun Woo, even though he doesn't recognize him as the person who always ordered him to carry out dangerous tasks. Meanwhile, Hyun Jin and Jung Woo are seen meeting with Jae Won. However, despite Jung Woo presenting various pieces of evidence suggesting that Jae Won knows something, they don't get any useful information. In a desperate attempt to protect themselves, Jae Won threatens to report them to higher authorities within the police. Feeling hopeless about extracting any information from her adoptive father, Hyun Jin asks Jung Woo to leave the situation. Meanwhile, in the office, one of Hyun Jin's colleagues tells her that Ji Hae is the person who sent the article about the orphanage. Sadly, when Hyun Jin tries to contact Ji Hae, there's no response because Ji Hae has been kidnapped by Jae Won and held captive. Meanwhile, Hyun Woo realizes that Ji Hae is in danger. Then, he sends Soo Hyun an address, letting him know that everything he's been searching for is in that place. On the other hand, Soo Hyun, armed with this information, rushes to the address where Jae Won is interrogating Ji Hae. To his surprise, Hyun Jin arrives at the scene as well. Soon after, Jae Won's men quickly report this to their superiors, and Jae Won, feeling panicked, orders his men to get rid of Hyun Jin immediately. Then, Hyun Jin screams as Jae Won's subordinates try to harm her. At that time, Soo Hyun hears her cry and rushes to her aid, not expecting her to be there. Filled with concern, Soo Hyun tries to protect her, but he's caught off guard when one of Jae Won's accomplices tries to stab him. In a brave move, Hyun Jin sacrifices herself to shield Soo Hyun. <laughs> Witnessing her injured, Soo Hyun quickly calls the police and ambulance. Soon after, Hyun Jin is taken to the hospital, and luckily, her injuries are not severe. At that time, he could only watch her from afar, feeling worried and helpless. Later, Jong Woo reported that he didn't find any trace of Ji Hae at the location they had searched. However, Hyun Jin, still not fully recovered, insisted on going there herself to investigate. When she arrived, Hyun Jin stumbled upon an earring with bloodstains, strengthening her belief that someone had been there the previous night. To be certain, she asked her colleague to examine the earring and compare the blood on it with Ji Hae's blood. Meanwhile, Su Hyun, still concerned about Hyun Jin, entered her house. There, he discovered all the information she had gathered about the serial killings, including the name Hyun Woo, who was suspected to be the main suspect. Su Hyun, unaware of Hyun Woo's true nature, recollected all the tasks given to him by his client. Suddenly, he realized that Hyun Woo had been the one ordering him to carry out those missions. Su Hyun's attention then focused on a flower pot similar to the one in his clinic. Upon further inspection, he found a hidden recording device. Now aware of Hyun Woo's true identity, Soo Hyun rushed to the flower shop, threatening him with a gun. There, he accused Hyun Woo of trying to harm Hyun Jin. However, Hyun Woo defended himself, claiming that it happened because Soo Hyun had broken their agreement. Then, he warned Soo Hyun that Hyun Jin was in danger because she had started investigating Jae Won. Suddenly, Soo Hyun revealed that Jae Won was his adoptive father, but Hyun Woo argued that someone like Jae Won wouldn't have such loving thoughts, as he even intended to kill his own biological son. Then, Soo Hyun inquired about the fate of the children from the orphanage, but Hyun Woo insisted that he would only reveal the information if Soo Hyun executed Young Hoon. However, this put Soo Hyun in a difficult position. Just then, Sul Gi arrived and Soo Hyun urged her to leave, not wanting her to be involved. On their way, Sul Gi expressed her gratitude towards Soo Hyun for helping her when Pavel had intended to harm her. She pleaded with him to stop and shared how much she loved him like an older brother, recognizing his kind-hearted nature as a caring veterinarian. Soo Hyun, surprised by the realization that there were people who truly cared for him, questioned if he deserved such kindness. Lost in his thoughts, he was suddenly taken aback when he saw Hyun Jin at his clinic. She informed him that she hoped he would visit her at the hospital. Upon hearing this, Soo Hyun eagerly agreed, promising to accompany her. 
Then, as Su Hyeon arrives at Hyeon Jin's house, he intends to leave, but she stops him. She confesses her worry whenever they meet in unfamiliar places and asks him to stay for a while. Meanwhile, Su Hyeon, not ready to be honest, tells a little lie. He claims that if he happened to be at the scene of the incident, Hyeon Jin was attacked because he was rescuing an abandoned stray dog. On the other hand, Hyeon Jin, seemingly not wanting to deepen her suspicions, expresses her trust in Su Hyeon's kindness. He then asks her why she is searching for Jihae, and she explains that she must uncover the truth through Jihae because she doesn't want other children to suffer the same fate as her own children in the orphanage. Hearing her explanation, he looks confused. Meanwhile, back at his house, J1 receives a call from Hyeon Woo via a payphone. Hyeon Woo questions why J1 kills his wife and child when he himself has committed terrible acts by sacrificing children for money. In response, J1 reveals that his goal is not just money. He desires people in power to beg him because he possesses the means to heal them and their families through his body reserves. Hearing that, Hyeon Woo becomes furious, promising that J1 will face consequences for all his wicked deeds. The next day, Su Hyeon, aware that Hyeon Jin is still injured, shows great concern for her. He helps her get ready for work, and during this time, he also encounters Jong Woo, who comes to pick up Hyeon Jin. After some time, Su Hyeon starts planning again to uncover the reason why he was treated unfairly by Jae Won. He believes that by revealing this, he can also uncover the truth about the fate of the children from the orphanage. Meanwhile, Hyeon Jin receives new information from Jong Woo. It reveals the involvement of Jae Won's company in the disappearance of the orphanage children. Rumors circulate that the children were the result of artificial insemination by Jae Won's company, intending to harvest their organs and sell them to authorities. At that time, Hyeon Jin finds it hard to believe that Jae Won could commit such a terrible act. However, due to the uncertainty surrounding the whereabouts of the orphanage children, she starts believing that the rumors might be true. <coughs> To gather evidence, Hyeon Jin and her partner secretly steal the surveillance camera from Jae Won's car. On the other hand, Su Hyeon is surprised to see So Yeon at his clinic. She knows Su Hyeon's true identity and remembers how he used to visit her house when the real Hyeon Jin was still alive. Shortly after, Sul Gi arrives and invites So Yeon to have a meal together. At that time, Hyeon Jin also joins them, creating a warm atmosphere. However, instead of staying, Su Hyeon decides to leave because he feels he doesn't deserve such happiness. Deep in thought, Su Hyeon broods in his clinic, and Hyeon Jin notices his troubled state. Just then, she receives a message from her colleague, urging her to watch a video from Jae Won's surveillance camera. As she views the footage, she hears Jae Won saying that Su Hyeon is the biggest mistake he ever made. The video also shows Su Hyeon's car nearly crashing into Jae Won's. Meanwhile, at Jae Won's hideout, Ji Hae manages to free herself from her restraints. However, as she tries to escape, Jae Won and his accomplices catch her again. There, he orders his subordinates to execute Ji Hae as a warning to both Su Hyeon and Hyeon Woo. Moreover, Jae Won already knows Su Hyeon's whereabouts, thanks to Tae Su. On the other hand, Hyeon Jin, having seen the footage of Ji Hae meeting a man who closely resembles the person almost involved in the car accident with Jae Won, realizes that the man is Su Hyeon. Then, she rushes to his clinic. On the way, Hyeon Jin receives a call from Dong Yong, who informs her that Su Hyeon never pursued veterinary training. This revelation strengthens her belief that Su Hyeon is involved in all the murders that have occurred. Then, as she entered the clinic, Hyeon Jin's heart raced. She had discovered a room filled with Su Hyeon's secret stash of weapons, deepening her anger towards him. She believed he was responsible for her lover's death. However, suddenly, something caught her eye. It was a drawer containing a paper airplane. It was the very same one Hyeon Jin had always given to Su Hyeon back in the orphanage. Doubt crept into her mind, causing her to hesitate before revealing Su Hyeon's true identity to Jong Woo, her lover's brother, who was also investigating the case. Before Su Hyeon could answer her burning question, chaos erupted. Chae Suk and his gang suddenly stormed in, launching an attack on Sul Gi. At that time, Su Hyeon, witnessing the danger, sprang into action, rushing to her aid. He urgently urged Hyeon Jin to take Sul Gi to safety while he confronted Tae Suk and his thugs head on. <laughs> Suddenly, the wailing sound of a police siren pierced the air, and Tae Suk and his crew hastily retreated, unaware that it was Philip, hiding nearby, who had sounded the alarm. Su Hyeon simply looked at Hyeon Jin, wordlessly departing from the scene. Soon after, Hyeon Jin swiftly escorted Sul Gi to the hospital, where the truth finally unraveled. Then, Sul Gi confessed that Su Hyeon was not the one who had taken her lover's life because it was someone else entirely. He had actually saved Sul Gi. 
Hearing that, the weight of her accusations crushed Hyeon Jin, flooding her with remorse for doubting Su Hyeon's innocence. However, her moment of relief was short-lived as her colleagues delivered devastating news that Ji Hae, the only witness capable of unraveling the murder case, had been found dead. Meanwhile, in the room where they examined dead bodies, Hyeon Jin arrived with a determined look. She received some information that made her heart race that Ji Hae had left behind a USB that seemed to be intentionally planted. Curiosity peaked, Hyeon Jin checked it and discovered a shocking recording. It was a conversation between Jae Won and Tae Soo, revealing their sinister plot to harvest children's organs for some mysterious authority. Armed with this crucial evidence, Hyun Jin gathered all the investigators to discuss the cases they were working on. She put the puzzle pieces together and came to a chilling conclusion. The series of murders were all orchestrated by Hyun Woo, seeking revenge against Jae Won for killing Hyun Woo's own family. However, she kept a secret from her colleagues because she knew that Hyun Woo had sent someone to carry out the killings. That someone was none other than Su Hyun. Sadly, even with concrete evidence in hand, Hyun Jin admitted that they couldn't apprehend Jae Won just yet. His power and influence were too great, making it difficult to bring him to justice. The realization weighed heavily on her young shoulders. Meanwhile, Su Hyun found himself at the hospital where Jae Won performed artificial insemination procedures. Pretending to be someone on Jae Won's side, he encountered a doctor who spilled a shocking secret. The doctor revealed his madness. It was creating children through artificial means and using them as a backup source for organs whenever the rulers demanded it. Suddenly, everything became clear to Su Hyun. The children, including himself, were created through artificial insemination just so their organs could be taken away. The anger inside him burned like a fire, and he decided to confront Jae Won. He made a daring call to Jae Won, promising to make him regret his actions. And true to his word, Su Hyun blew up the place where the artificial insemination was carried out. At that moment, Jae Won was taken by surprise, never expecting Su Hyun's retaliation. Knowing that more children were about to fall victim to organ harvesting, Su Hyun followed Jae Won's henchmen to their secret location. With swift precision, he disabled the henchmen, setting the captive children free. <laughs> His heart swelled with determination to protect them at all costs. Meanwhile, the investigation team had discovered evidence linking Su Hyun to the role of an assassin hired by Hyun Woo. At that time, Hyun Jin could no longer cover up for him and reluctantly accepted that Su Hyun was now a fugitive, hunted by the authorities. In the midst of the search, Hyun Jin received a message from Su Hyun, urging her to meet him at a specific location. He wanted her to take care of the saved children in Seulgi. Then, Hyun Jin wordly offered to take charge of the case and punish Jae Won, but Su Hyun remained silent, leaving without an answer. As the police closed in on the scene, Philip, who already knew Su Hyun's fugitive status, advised him to leave Korea immediately. But Su Hyun had one final mission in mind. There, Philip understood his determination and provided him with a car and a new cell phone for this important task. Meanwhile, a former chief prosecutor arrived to warn Jae Won about the investigation team led by Hyun Jin. He explained that they had strong evidence against Jae Won, but he wouldn't be punished because of his powerful connections. In response, the former prosecutor ordered Jae Won to eliminate all the evidence, including the children from the insemination program who were now under Hyun Jin's care. Soon after, Jae Won immediately instructed Tae Soo to take action and contact Yong Hoon to erase the evidence. Then, Yong Hoon hurriedly got into his car, unaware that Hyun Woo was already inside. Tragically, he killed Yong Hoon, but his actions were quickly discovered by the police. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hyun Jin and Jong Woo arrived at Jae Won's location to make the arrest. There, Jae Won remained calm, confident that he would easily escape the charges. He refused to answer any questions during the interrogation, even when faced with strong evidence presented by Hyun Jin. On the other hand, Su Hyun returned to Hyun Woo's hideout to inform him about Jae Won's arrest. He pleaded with Hyun Woo to help Hyun Jin, but Hyun Woo explained that Jae Won's arrest wouldn't be successful due to his influential connections. While they were discussing, the police suddenly arrived to arrest Hyun Woo. Determined to protect Su Hyun from getting caught, Hyun Woo decided to confront the police, allowing Su Hyun a chance to escape. After his conversation with Hyun Woo, Su Hyun felt a heavy weight on his shoulders. He realized that his final task was to eliminate Jae Won. He reached out to Seul Gi, saying his goodbyes and urging her to take care of her health. Seul Gi, filled with sadness, could only cry and pleaded with Su Hyun to become a veterinarian again. 
In the interrogation room, Hyun Jin and Jong Woo uncovered Hyun Woo's true motive behind the serial killings was to seek revenge on Jae Won. Then, they showed Hyun Woo a photo of his family. As Hyun Jin and Jong Woo were leaving, Hyun Woo requested some time to talk to Jae Won. Soon after, Hyun Jin returned home to find Sul Gi in tears, consumed by worry for Soo Hyun. She begged Hyun Jin to bring Soo Hyun back and let him live, explaining that he had never experienced love before. Hyun Jin, torn inside, couldn't fulfill Sul Gi's request because Soo Hyun had become the most wanted person by the police, making it impossible to grant her wish. The next day, Jae Won was set free when the prosecutor's office dismissed all the charges and evidence collected by the investigation team. Jong Woo, feeling frustrated, devised a plan to confront Jae Won alongside Hyun Woo, who would be allowed to accompany the attorney general. There, Hyun Woo attempted to attack Jae Won, but was stopped by another prosecutor. However, this confrontation managed to anger Jae Won, just as Jong Woo had intended. Once released, Jaewon ordered Taesu to kidnap the children from the insemination program who were under the investigation team's watch. Fortunately, Soo Hyun discovered this plan and hurriedly joined forces with Philip to save the children from being taken by Jaewon's subordinates. Just as they were about to be captured, Hyun Jin arrived at the scene. Come here, Hyun. Once she saw that the children were safe, she dashed off to apprehend Jae Won. Meanwhile, at Jae Won's residence, Soo Hyun skillfully took down the guards one by one. Tae Soo, witnessing this, finally intervened, hoping to wear out Soo Hyun. As Soo Hyun faced the threat of Tae Soo's gun, Philip bravely sacrificed himself to save Soo Hyun. Fueled by anger upon witnessing Philip's sacrifice, Soo Hyun relentlessly fought against Tae Soo, ultimately leaving him paralyzed. Then, he approached Jae Won, shooting him. Initially, Jae Won, who had been arrogant, begged for forgiveness and offered his wealth, even claiming Soo Hyun as his biological son. However, Soo Hyun ignored his pleas and shot Jae Won in the leg once again. Soon after, Hyun Jin and her team arrived on the scene, pleading with Soo Hyun to stop and put an end to all of this. Suddenly, Tae Soo regained consciousness and attempted to shoot Soo Hyun. In order to protect Soo Hyun, Hyun Jin had no choice but to shoot Tae Soo, ending his life. There, she desperately tried to convince Soo Hyun to surrender, as a heavily armed special police team had their guns aimed at him. Meanwhile, Soo Hyun, touched by Hyun Jin's sincerity, initially considered complying with her plea. However, when he saw Jae Won's deceitful smirk, he immediately aimed and shot Jae Won in the head without hesitation. In the end, it was shown that all those involved in Jae Won's crimes were finally arrested. Hyun Woo provided vital testimony and information about Sul Gi, who, like Soo Hyun and Hyun Jin, was a child born through artificial insemination. Meanwhile, Hyun Jin now leads a peaceful life with Sul Gi and Soo Hyun's loyal dog by her side. With a smile, Hyun Jin imagines Soo Hyun, the hero who saved the children from evil, and imagine a world where they were born under normal circumstances, living happily together as a loving couple. The series ends. The moral lesson of the series is that even the most skilled assassins can find a new career path as veterinarians. Soo Hyun's transformation from a deadly assassin to a caring animal doctor shows us that it's never too late to pursue our true passions, even if they seem completely different from our current profession. Remember, there's always a chance to switch gears and embark on a wacky, unexpected adventure in the pursuit of happiness and fluffy animals.